Glory to the sea. Glory to England. Turn with me to Deuteronomy 28th chapter. I'll start with the 11th verse. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous and good in the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy ground, and the land which the Lord swear to thy father to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain into thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thank you for standing for the reading of the word, and you might be seen once again. I don't know if you remember, but Brother Charles preached these very scriptures just, I don't know, a few weeks or a month or so ago. And uh, it's kind of funny that when you preached on those scriptures just a week before, I wasn't having a real good week. Seemed like everything that I tried kind of went south. And Brother Charles, I thought about those scriptures. God make you the head, not the tail. Make you the lender, not the borrower. And Brother Richie, I done got feeling sorry for myself. Uh oh. Exactly right. I said, God, I don't care about being the head. Put me somewhere in the middle. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't have to. I don't have to be the lender. Just put me somewhere in the middle. And then Brother Charles gets up and preached. I mean, he just wore my. I. I, I didn't have enough room under the chair to hide my feet. He just wore my feet out. Cause I had prayed. God just. Just let me be somewhere in the middle. And I don't know, maybe, it's, you know, we've been, Sister, Sister Robert and I have been trying to get dirt work to try to get started to build a house. And it seemed like everything we tried just, just blowed up in our face. And I, so I just, I'll just, I guess I took a scripture too literal to be content. But I was content just to be in the middle. But that ain't what God said for us to do, right? Right. He said he would make us the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. And if I decided just to be in the middle, I wouldn't live up what God had for me. Right. Hmm. Yeah, if you find yourself just being in the middle, you wind up in a rut. And it's easy to get stuck in a rut. They used to be a um, Brother Charles and appreciate this one. He, we used to go down to Callaway's Lake. And um, there was one way in that you could drive all the way in there if you could stay out of the ruts. And Brother Sam, once you got in the rut, it's hard to get out of the rut. And sometimes you just had to be complacent just being in the rut and trying your best to get to your destination. It's hard to get to your destination 
in a room. You'll never accomplish. Brother Corey, you'll never get this yard moved as long as you're in the room. <laughs> I hate to keep bringing that up, but just seeing the whole yard mowed just does right. side of the right. I know it does him. Right. But you'll never accomplish what God has for you to do for yourself right. or for anybody else. Right. If you're complacent, be in the room. Brother Charles read a scripture the other day about the just man falls seven times and gets back up. Right. You know, if he don't get back up, just means he's in a rut. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you can stay in the rut so long that you're just, it's just the way it is. Yeah. Have you ever felt like that? Well, God, okay, you know. Uh, I've been here and I'm still here, and that's just the way it's going to be. But according to his word, that's not just the way it's going to be. Right. Yeah. Brother Richard, he promised me if I'll if I do my part, he's going to do his part. Well, and it don't have to be just the way it is. Can I be just me tonight? When, whenever I was praying that day for God just let this put me in the middle. I told him, God, I'm tired of sucking bubbles. When you're sucking bubbles, you got the backside. <clears throat> I didn't want to be the tail. I didn't have to be the head. Just Move me up a little bit. But I sell him God short. Right. If, if you're okay with just being mediocre, then if I'm okay with just being mediocre, I'm serving the wrong God. Right. I, I used to I used to dream about being on the stage. I seen a thing the other day said, if you was doing what you dreamed of being when you was a kid, what would you be doing? I'd be on, on stage playing music. But Richie, I used to dream about being at a concert and the drummer got sick. Okay. <laughs> if you go dream, dream me. And Unbeknownst to me, I was the only drummer in the audience. <laughs> you know, they walk up, and I've seen some, uh, this one guy that's, he's real foul mouth, and he's good about getting just people jump in next to him up on the stage. And this one young guy, he was a guitar player, and he had his guitar, and he reached in his pocket. And guess what he had in his pocket? He had a guitar pick. He didn't come to be mediocre. He didn't come to stay stuck in the rut. Right. He didn't come to be at the back of the line. Right. He come to be the head. And that don't mean get the big head about whatever you're doing, but whatever you're going to do, do it with all you got. You know, I used to say whenever, whenever I was out in the world, I was as good a heathen as anybody. And that's not a good thing. I did, I, I give it all I had. So why would, I, why would I be okay with just being in the middle, living for God? Right. <laughs> I've been to several concerts with Richie and never had a sick drummer. <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't when I was there. It just wasn't. It, got drunk, passed out. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be for me to be the one. But Brother Corey, if that didn't happen, I'd have. Maybe that's, maybe that's what it was. I didn't show up with my drumsticks in my pocket. Uh -oh. I didn't go prepared. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like the church. You, I, I'm sure you've all heard the story. The church you know, hadn't, hadn't had no rain, hadn't had no rain. And the church was getting together. We're going to get together tonight. We're going to pray for rain. And one person in the, in the crowd brought an umbrella up. 
Brother Spoon, he come prepared for what he's praying for. It, it, so I guess if I'm going to take this word literal, and he'll make me the head and not the tail, I need to start acting like it. I need to start claiming my position. And that, and when I say that, that's not you know high and mighty, just claiming the position he's put me for me to do, for me to be the best I can at that, right. and and to to relish the words that I read. Right. Amen. If I do fall down, get up. Don't stay in the rut. If Bryce is back on, so I can see what I'm saying. I got a new tablet here. I'm just now learning how to use it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't turn the lights down like Brother Ben does with his tablet. I got, I got to have the real stuff here. So. Sixth chapter of Ephesians, thir starting on the 13th verse, says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having all, having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate yes. of righteousness, right. and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Right. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Having done all to do, having done all you could do to stand. Stand. Right. So my question to you tonight is, where are you standing? All right. Are you standing stuck in the middle? Are you standing in the rut? Are you standing as a borrower or the lender? Are you standing as the head? Now when God tells us he'll make us the head and not the tail, I don't mean every day he's going to be a rose garden. Right. But I'm standing on his promises today. I hadn't always done right, talked right, and what I say, spit right, and how the old preacher used to say all that. But I'm trying. And if I'll continue putting one foot in front of the other, right. on a journey that he placed me on a few years ago, yes. then I'm not going to stay in the rut. <coughs> I'm not going to stay stuck in the middle. I'm not going to stay stuck in bubbles. I think that Brother Wayne Hall talked about that one time about sucking bubbles. It sounds like something he would say to me. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I am not sorry. I, I, just, I just love God. And I didn't. Even after the Lord gave me this, sometimes you still find yourself Feeling, feeling sorry for yourself again, Brother Richie. Got a call today that somebody, or was it yesterday, somebody in my office at school that he'd sit with, they had to buy her, so he had to come home. Brother Gibbs, somebody he sat with had to buy her, so he had to come home. Brother Cole, he was already sick, he didn't have the virus, but he had to come home. <laughs> Since then, I was just feeling terrible. So all my grandkids just, they can't do, they can't. I'd love to put them on school for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. But when we couldn't, when Cole couldn't go to school Friday, he cried. I, I'm like, no, he, he, too, he just feels terrible. He's crying because he couldn't go to school. Yeah. I cried because I had to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went back to school a few years ago in, in my online classes, and I can turn my laptop on now, and the sound it makes just makes me drop in a knot. <laughs> But I, you know, I was just feeling, I just, all my grandkids, just, they can't go to school, they can't do this, they can't do that. And uh, I had to go to our Algoma Walmart this afternoon. And there's a lady there that, that I knew, and 
she had a grandson with her, and I could just see him just bouncing and blur. I thought, that cute little kid there. And when I come around the corner, he was on a walker. Had braces on his legs and a wheel on that walker, and he was just having you know, brother, he didn't he didn't care. He wasn't worried about nobody with a virus. He wasn't. And I thought, well, God, you told him you'd make me the head and not the tail. Here I am trying to feel sorry for myself once again. It's strange how he'll put you in a position. Right. And I don't know the little boy's name, but God knows him. And uh, I couldn't feel sorry for him because he was just happy to think of me. I felt sorry for me. I said, here I am feeling so terrible about little things. And this little dude, he comes through. Matter of fact, he come off the ramp there in front of Dollar General. His grandma said, Where, where'd you go? I said, he coming around. And he'd come off that ramp. He'd pick his little feet up and let that thing just, he rolled halfway across the park. He wasn't, he wasn't stuck with it. I don't know if he knew anything about the Bible, but God had made him the head, not the tail. And he was taking full charge of it. So why? I, I'm able-bodied. I'm able to get up and go. I'm able to pray for my grandkids. I'm able to right. pray for my family. So there's no need in us taking the back seat to anybody. This one may not be as controversial as my court sermon was, but it's, it's, it's still out of Bible. I just... I'm, since Debbie, I'm tired of I'm tired of being where I try to be. Why would I expect to be anywhere else? Well, I just said, God, just, just let me just let me get right here. Comfortable. You know, it, when when the water's not moving, it gets stagnant. And I'm tired of being stagnant. It's time to move. It's, it's time to, yes. to. If you're going to sit still, we need to play leap for all the time. I'm getting a headache. <laughs> if we're playing Red Rover, I want them to send me right over. Well, y'all tell the truth. I'm about, y'all about to learn my age now, but y'all probably ain't never played Red Rover. I used to be the first one they'd call to come over because I was the littlest one out there. But you know what? I had it in my head when they called on me. I was going through. Well, God called on me for the same reason. Right. So why not get it in my head tonight? Right. You know, the, the devil may have his line, say Red Grover, send Jody right on over and we got him. I, I think it's time to get a backbone about ourselves. Right. A backbone about myself. You know, it's, I failed way more than seven times. But also, there's other scriptures that rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, you shall rise. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It's time to get up. It's time to get up and move up. And well, those things, it's time to get in, get out, or get run over. And I think it's time to move up. You know, the, I don't, I don't pay much attention to the news, but I hear enough of stuff around me that um, God just gonna hold out so much longer. Right. But He said, you know, once He winked at ignorance, and uh, told Brother Smooth with. Having taken prayer requests, I said, We need to just rebuke all the stupid people. <laughs> Glad my grandsons ain't in here, but they tell me, I don't say stupid. As far as, far as Gump would say, stupid is as stupid does. And there's a lot of that going on. <clears throat> that's a whole other that's a whole other sermon. <laughs> it's time to move up. Those booths time to cut them wheels hard to the right, get out of that rut. I I can remember at Callaway's Lake Road and, and um, you really had to shower. You had to have some power yep. to get out of the ruts. We got to have some power tonight to get out of these ruts. Right. Um, it's time 
it's time to assume the position that God brought us in. That's right. It's, it's time to be the head. It's time to be the light that this town needs to see. We see enough darkness as it is. It's time for us as a church body to be a light. It's time to move up. And not to the deluxe apartment of the Jefferson. It's time to move up. Y'all pray for me. It's a simple formula to those blessings to become in the head. Verse 2 of that same chapter gives us that formula. It simply says, uh, All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The king is listening to God. <coughs> hearken to the voice of the Lord to become the head. How these blessings overtake you. Listen, if we're doing our best to live for God, if we're doing our best to, to uh, follow the leading of God and listen to the voice of God, you can't outrun the blessings of God, right? The Bible said they'll overtake you, right? They'll overtake you. I don't know about you, but I want the blessings of God to overtake you every day. Praise God. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Word. That's all I'll say. You've been back here Sunday morning worshiping God. Pray much one for another. Pray much about uh, this COVID situation. Right. And it bugs the far out of me. <laughs> <coughs> you might say, you know, because, because I, the simple fact is you don't know who to believe and who not to. Right? Mm -hmm. That's right. About this whole thing. So God give us wisdom about it. Yes. God gives Let God give us wisdom. But let's pray much one for another. Be back here Sunday morning uh, worshiping God. See what God's got in store for us. Praise God. Anything else before we go?